Mongo engine supports arrays with the list field object, which in MongoDB are called arrays, but they're really lists, not arrays. I probably should explain myself. In today's episode, we're going to talk a lot about lists and arrays. And just so that there's no confusion, because the industry has some confusion in it, I'm going to very distinctly describe the difference between a list and an array. Uh, and a list is, in computer science, a generic term simply meaning a data type that has a sequence of items in it. So, for example, this is a list. It's a list of integers 0573. This is another list, and it's a different list because the order of the uh, data items is now different. And this is also a list. Um, in this case, it's the number, the number zero, a string called rabbit, and the value of pi in floating point notation. Um, and you can mix types in a list because a list is, like I said, just a generic term meaning anything, really, that's in a sequence. But an array is a little bit different. It has a much more restricted form. So this is also a list, but it's also an array. Um, in this case, it's an array of integers. This is also an array. It's an array of strings. Um, and But this is not an array, getting back to the example from the lists, because the data types don't match. In an array, a true array, all the data types match. Um, arrays are used heavily in C and C-like languages. Lists are used in more dynamic languages, such as Python. Where the confusion comes in is, well, frankly, it's the confusion comes from JavaScript. You see, when JavaScript was developed, it was developed to be very C-like. And so when they created their sequence data type, they called it an array. And this is an example here of an array uh, var cars equals in this three strings here. And in the documentation, it, generally speaking, makes it look like an array. But the problem is, and here, this, let's try this code out here. So if I execute and run this, you'll get these three items showing up over here. Um, however, if I add to this array with a, a floating point number, there's the value of pi or an integer, and run it again, it still works. This is because it's not really an array, it's a list. If it were just about JavaScript, no big deal. But the problem is JavaScript is used as the source of information for a few other protocols. Very specifically, JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, is based on JavaScript. So even though JSON has lists support, it calls them arrays. And MongoDB, because it's based on JSON, and in fact, BSON is derived, is basically developed for Mongo, um, that format is based on JSON. So both of those protocols and uh, systems use the same wording. They call them arrays, even though they're lists. Adding just a slight bit of confusion is that the current documentation for Mongo Engine has a field called list field, which we're just about to jump into. And it does support lists, but the wording of the documentation implies that they're always for arrays, because it implies that you need to pass in a uh, data type for the list. Um, although it is actually optional, and I'll show you a way to do that. OK, let's go ahead and jump into using a list field in Mongo Engine. Um, we're going to use the code from our previous video. So here we're defining a document called Famous Quote. And I've already got quite a few fields in the document. And we are have, currently have a rating. So let's go ahead and create a rating history so we can see where this rating came from. So rating history is a list field. And it wants to know what type of items will be in the list. And for now, we're going to treat this like an array. We're going to have just one type of item in the list. Um, we're going to make them integers. So me.int field. And uh, we need to limit the choices for uh, one to five stars for ratings. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go. There we go. There is a list of integers. Um, and the allowed values for those integers are 1 through 5. So, oh, pardon me. I almost about made a mistake there. Uh, this is actually a parameter for the integer, not for the list. There we go. 
All right, let's go ahead and add some uh, in my example down here, my quote dot rating history equals, uh, let's make some values up, two, three, and five. There we go. Now I have a rating history. Save and run. And there it is. Here's our uh, rating history here with scores of two, three, and five. Now I somehow doubt this actually comes up to a rating of 4.3, so let's actually go ahead and make that rating accurate. And uh, I can actually show you a little bit of a trick here. You can assign your own methods to any document. That's kind of outside the scope of going through the fields, but for example, if I wanted to have a routine calculate the value of the current rating, so uh, calc rating, pass it in self, um, I want to assign the rating to the mean value of the list field. So uh, self.rating history. And uh, the mean function will automatically return a, uh, a floating point value. Uh, to use this, I need to import um, from statistics, import mean. Now, uh, so statistics package, unfortunately, is a Python 3.5 or greater uh, package, I believe. And so uh, if you're running Python 2.7, you'll have to use a different means to calculate the mean. But uh, it's the same idea, though. You do your calculation here. And that's it. That really that sets the value. So over here, instead of uh, setting a arbitrary value here, after I have the history signed, I can do my quote dot calc rating. Get rid of that, and that'll set the rating field. Let's go ahead and run it. Make sure it works. And there it is, two, three, and five. And now the rating is 3.33335 because it's a repeating number. Okay, now we've seen the basics of this. Um, one uh, quick quirk with the list field, if you set required equals true on a list field, it requires that not just that the list exists, uh, in other words, you can't just send it to an empty list. It has to have at least one item in the list. So required equals true, has a slightly different meaning than it does in the other uh, fields, uh, but not too different. It just simply means it has to be a non-empty list. But what if we want to treat the list field as an actual list? In other words, let's say in this example for rating history, I want choices one through five, but also sometimes people, you know, they give a comment about the, uh, the famous quote, but they don't actually provide me with a rating, and I want to store the fact that they didn't provide me with a rating. So I want to be able to support, say, null values in there and instead. Well, clearly, this can't work because a null is not the same thing as an integer. Uh, I need to make this behave more like a list. Uh, traditionally, you can just leave the list field empty like that, and it allows you to put anything you want into there. Although in practice, I, I discourage you from doing that. I, there's no requirement that they'll support that in the future. In fact, I don't even know that it works on the current version. Um, I, what I recommend instead is that you use a dynamic field. Uh, dynamic field, we have not covered yet, but essentially it's a field that allows anything. So that right there is a dynamic field. And now I can put anything I want to in the list. So if my rating history is two, three, and let's say uh, none, five. That's a perfectly legitimate list. It should now store and use that. So let's save this and run it. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I can't just pull it out of nowhere. There we go. I've uh, got an error message. Oh, now that I got nuns in that list, it's causing problems with my mean calculations. Let me fix that real fast. Let's do this as a uh, uh, list comprehension. 
n for n in self-rating history if n is not none. I think that's right. Save, run. There we go. We've got um, everything working, but including including the uh, the use of a null in there. And let's go take a look at it in the actual MongoDB database. Um, rating history. There we go. And if you're curious, if you want to see it actually as a JSON document, there it is. Like I said, JSON's arrays are actually lists, and here it is. So that is the basics of the list field. Let's go ahead and try another type of field, a uh, related to list field. That's a sorted list field. Sorted list field. And let's go ahead and make this, put this back to being an integer field so that it knows what to sort on. Um, take none back out of here. There we go. And. Uh, in fact, it's already sorted right now. Let's put a number in front so that it actually sorts the history when it's being saved. And here it is. The history has been sorted. Uh, the best way to add to a sorted list is by pushing it to the end of the list. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that is, but it says that in the documentation, so I'm repeating it. Um, so here in um, my quote history, you know, the push in Python is done with the append command. So I'm putting another value in there. And there we go. We got a sorted list. And now, kind of a complicated thing, how can we do multi-dimensional lists or multi-dimensional arrays? Um, that is done with simply embedding one array into another. And uh, let's say I wanted to put up a, it's kind of off topic, but a tic-tac-toe board, which would be an array of uh, Boolean, or let's say makes it, make it string fields. So tic-tac-toe board is a list field. If you're in uh, England, I think they call them uh, knots and crosses. Um, so that's a list field containing list fields. Containing a string field. So there is a multidimensional array. And so let's go ahead and set up a tic-tac-toe board. So my quote dot tick would be There we go, there's a tic-tac-toe game in progress. And let's save this and run. And there it is, tic-tac-toe board, a list of lists. And you can go in as far deep as you want to for that. And there is one last list type that I'm not gonna talk about today because I need to go through embedded documents first and that is an embedded document list field. Uh, that is uh, a great way to have lists of dictionaries, uh, but I really wanna cover embedded documents first. So that's in the next video. And when we're done with that video, I might even make this one a third one, I do the embedded document list field because it has its own quirks, uh, but it is an incredibly powerful tool. Um, in fact, you're more often than not, if you're needing to do something that requires that you have more than one data type in a list, 
it's best done as an embedded document list because then you get a lot more flexibility and much more consistent means of doing things. I would say more often than not, when you need to do a list field where you're not having a single data type, it's because you're working on legacy data. If you don't control the format of the database, you may have no choice in the matter. You have to have an opened, open list with a dynamic field in there. Um, otherwise, I recommend that you do something more flexible like using embedded documents, but that'll be for the next video. Uh, appreciate you all watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Thank you.